Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Nastasia and I hated being single. <laughs> Before I met my husband, I did not enjoy my singleness season until the very, very end, right before I met my husband. And there are about seven things that I wish I could have told myself from this perspective. I wish I could have told past single stoss these things. And I'm gonna tell them to you in hopes that it helps you and relieves some pressure off your shoulders and encourages you. So before you get into it, if you end up liking this video, give it a like helps me out. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. I make more videos like this and I'm making a ton more in the next few months. I have a TikTok. It's right here. <laughs> Trying to be more active over there, whatever that means. And I have an Instagram so you can see the behind the scenes of my life. And last thing, I have a Patreon. If you'd like to see exclusive content from me, Patreon is a subscription-based platform. I will have that link down below. Love it over there. If you're a patron watching this video, my heart goes to you. Thank you so much. It directly provides and helps for our family. So I love you so much. Let's get into it. First thing I would tell single really broken up with a ton of times Stoss because I it's not like I was single for like eight years straight before I met my husband. Nothing wrong with that, by the way, but that wasn't my story. I just kept getting dumped and dumped and dumped and dumped and dumped. And, dumped. <laughs> and it really got to me. Something that I wish I could have told myself is stop worrying about where you're going to meet your husband. Stop worrying about it. I would be like, I would get in my head about like, what coffee shop do I need to go to? What place do I need to be? What, you know, I should do this and this and this to meet my husband. So I get it because it's hard when you are like, in my case, I was graduated from high school. I was graduated from college. I knew I wouldn't really meet most likely my husband at my job at the time. So I was like, how do grown adults even meet men unless it's at like a bar or something which is not my vibe and so I was like I guess it's at a coffee shop I need to go to every coffee shop till I meet my husband um and let me tell you this there is nothing that you can do to slow or speed up the time that God is going to lead you and your husband together. And also, you're not going to mess it up. It's not like you're going to miss him by five minutes at a certain coffee shop. God is so much more sovereign than that. He is over this. You know what I mean? Not like I'm over it, but like he's over it. And he has everything planned out exactly the way it's supposed to be. You don't have to worry about that. What I will say is, okay, then how do you meet people? How How is that even going to happen? I work from home or this or that. Still get involved with stuff. I would say do stuff that you enjoy doing. I wouldn't do things just in hopes of, I'm going to do this so that I meet my husband or I'm going to go here because that's where boys go. I'm not going to, like, you shouldn't do that. But what I will say is you should you should get connected to a church because that's what the Bible calls us to do anyway. You should get involved in that church. You should start volunteering or just different things like that. Like get involved with things that are already good for you and already good for your soul. Get a gym membership. Go do stuff. That's a good thing anyway. Go to parks. Go to coffee shops. That's fine if that's something you like doing. But if you hate coffee shops, don't just go to try to meet a man. <laughs> So do things that you love doing. Maybe even make a list of things that like you really enjoy doing. Start doing those things. It's just good to fill your time with being out of the house anyway. And getting out there, not in the sense of trying to date everybody you see, but just getting involved so that you can enjoy your life to the fullest. I'm personally not somebody who supports or recommends dating apps, just personally. I know some people have great experiences. That's great. I have my own convictions about it. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't go do stuff. You know what I mean? Bottom line, you don't need to orchestrate this. God's going to orchestrate it. Number two, keep writing down those prayers, the sad ones, the hopeful ones, the frustrated, angry ones, the broken up with ones, the good day ones, write them all down. Write down prayers for your future husband, write down prayers just to God about just what's going on, write them down, date them all like it'll be it'll blow your mind to look back and be like oh my goodness this was two weeks before I met my husband and I was so I felt so hopeless but I was still putting my faith in God like it's really mind-blowing and like 
I will keep those journals for the rest of my life. I'll keep those prayers the rest of my life. It's so sweet to be able to show your future husband that when you guys meet and get married. Like that is amazing to show your future kids. Write them all down. I promise you won't regret it. And it's such, one, it's a good outlet, but two, like, when you're in a position like that, whether happy, sad, hopeful, worried, not really sure what's going on, praying to the Lord is the best thing you can do anyway. Also, sorry if I feel really low here. I'm literally like sitting on pillows. I forgot my seat. I'm too short for the camera. So I'm a little bit better. <laughs> Moving on. Number three, this is something my friend Drew told me post breakup. So shout out to her because I just, I love this. I kept getting dumped over and over again, okay? And I was really stressed about it because in my mind, I thought to myself, if I'm getting dumped five times in about a year, that's a whole nother video, then how, how do I expect to have this amazing unicorn of a godly man come in my life and want me? And I remember Drew told me, she goes, Stas, it only takes one doesn't matter if you got dumped five times. It doesn't matter if you got dumped 15 times. It only takes one. And by the way, because this, I think this should be pointed out. Not that this video is about this. I didn't get dumped five times because of like a certain sin issue that I was having and struggling with or anything like that. It was literally, it was God. And it was like out of nowhere, every single one of them would just be like, I don't know what happened. All the feelings just got taken away. I don't know what I don't know what happened and most of those guys beforehand were like I want to marry you I see myself marrying you this is it for me and then all of a sudden all of a sudden after I had prayed certain prayers of like Lord if he's not for me take him away immediately just I don't know what happened to us the feelings went away I don't think we should date anymore and I kept getting in my head about it because I was like, what the heck is wrong with me then? <laughs> um, but no, it only takes one. It doesn't matter how many times you've got dumped. It doesn't matter. Also, it doesn't matter if you've never dated anyone before. So I want to put that out there too, because some women are insecure because they've never had a boyfriend. And I have had a few friends who have never had a boyfriend. And then their first boyfriend, they end up getting engaged and married. Not because like... It, it was just, it was God's providence and it was God protecting them and keeping them for that one man. And like, either way, it only takes one. Number four, it does not matter how old you are. <sighs> it doesn't matter how old you get married. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. And I know that it feels like the biggest deal in the whole world. And I know it feels like you're running out of time and men are getting swept up and you're, you're, you're running out of options and your biological clock is ticking. You aren't even in control of time. God is, okay? You are not a clock. You are a human being. You are a woman. You are a princess of God. You don't have to worry about time, all right? And I get it because... Even when I was, when did I meet Kai? I was either 22 or 23, it doesn't matter. But I know to most people that sounds like that's so young, that why were you worrying about it? Even then I was getting in my head about it because of point number one of where am I gonna meet him? This is gonna take forever, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter how old you are. I have friends who didn't get married until they were in their 30s. I know people who haven't get, got married until they were in their 40s or 50s. And they have beautiful, fruitful marriages. And they all say, I'm glad it didn't happen sooner. This is exactly how it was supposed to happen. God's timing is perfect. He's never early. He's never late. He is right on time. You're not a clock. Stop making yourself an object. You're not an object. You're a woman. God has purpose in this season for you. You don't have to worry about it. You're going to have as many children as you're supposed to have. You're going to get married when you're supposed to get married. And you are being developed and refined as the woman you're supposed to be and the wife you're supposed to be. And so is your husband out there somewhere. So don't feel like time is running out on you. Next, your five-year plan is stupid. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Your five-year plan is stupid compared to God's five-year plan for you. And they might align. They might be the same, but they might be so different. So if you're sitting here being like, in five years, I want to have two kids and be married and blah, blah, blah. But none of that's happening. I don't even have a boyfriend. I don't even know how to date. So, and you start freaking out. Maybe it's because that's not the plan God has for you. And his plan is better. Maybe 
it'll be more. Maybe you will meet your husband tomorrow and you'll have three kids in your five-year plan. My point is, it doesn't matter what your five-year plan is when it's, when it, if it's stressing you out, don't make a five-year plan. If it's stressing you out over, you know, elements that you can't control, like when you meet your husband, then stop making five-year plans or make five-year plans that involve just your, your input, your action. So like if it's career wise, they don't rely on an outside force. So for instance, right now, my plan for the next year is to upload at least twice a week to YouTube every single week. That's my plan. I can't control how many subscribers I get. I can't control how many views I get. I, you know, and if I made a year plan based on other people's decisions, that would stress me out. But I can make a plan based on what I'm going to do consistently. So if your five year plan is stressing you out when it comes to the relationship aspect, stop doing it. Next one, invest this time into your friends and your family. Become the most solid, loyal friend during this time. I promise it will reap rewards. The harvest will be there, whether you end up having a husband soon or not, or whatever it is, the rewards will be there from good, godly friendships in your life and family. And so if you have that in your life, don't just push it to the side. Don't just, you know, whatever. And don't sacrifice friendships because you're coveting after the relationship they might have. I promise that's not worth it ever. Support your friends in the best way you possibly can. That means going to maybe their sports events or going to whatever it is or your family. If you have nieces and nephews and brothers and sisters, whatever it is, really Put your time into checking in on them, planning activities with them, and just let them know that you care about them. If you're in a position to buy, you know, little gifts and just surprise your friends and your family, do that. I promise they will remember that and it will invest way down the road. And also like, what an incredible time. I'm telling you right now, when you get in a relationship and when you get married and then when you have kids and all of this stuff, it's so much easier for friendships to fall on the wayside and you feel horrible about it. Take advantage of this time. It is such a gift. Bonus to that is that maybe you're like me and you really like part of the reason you wanted to meet your husband is because you're like, I just want to love someone so well. I know I can love them well and I want to love someone. You can love your friends, even if it's not in a romantic way. You can love your friends and family really well. You can pour that love onto people and it be received in the best way while you are in a waiting season. That love does not have to go, you know, wasted or in vain. That love can be poured out in different ways to your friends and your family. My last tip that I wish I would have told myself, and it is the most important. If you are meant to be single right now, and maybe longer than you think, and maybe forever, it is okay. It is. And the reason that this was so hard for me was because I thought to myself, but I have such a longing to be a wife. And it makes sense. I am a wife now. And so that longing was there for a reason. But I had that longing way before I got married. And so I thought, how long is it going to take? How long am I going to feel this longing inside of me? But if you are meant to be single right now, please hear me. If you hear nothing else in this video, hear me. It's for your good. God is not punishing you. This isn't some kind of trick. He's not dangling you like a puppet and playing with you. This is for your good. If you are a child of God, he's doing it for your good and he loves you. Okay. And so even if you get in the worst case scenario mindset of what if I'm going to be single forever? Okay, let's go there. What if? If you are single forever, can you come to terms with the fact that that means God says, I promise this is what's best for you. Not this is a punishment for you or you don't deserve a husband or anything like that. I love you, child. This is what's best for you. I need you to trust me. This is the best thing that I have chosen for you. Can you come to terms with that? Because when you can fully come to terms with that, whether you end up getting married one day or not, whether it's close or far away, you will feel this unexplainable peace. And 
I know it's hard to be like, well, even if I want to get to that place, because I remember I was here, I was like, I want to get to that place, but I don't even know where to start. Well, first, pray. Pray for God to give you that, that peace and that acceptance of his will. And I would also encourage you to just keep pouring that truth over you that whatever is for me is for my good. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I cannot encourage you enough to ask somebody some questions about the Lord. Get a Bible, start reading it, start asking the Lord to come into your heart and open your eyes to his grace and his love. Because when you are a child of God, everything is better. Everything is better. And you don't have to stress about stuff like this. And that's why it's so hard for me to look back because I'm like, Stas, you knew you were a child of God. You knew God had it in his hands. Why didn't you just trust him? And I finally did at the very end. I finally did. After my last breakup, it was around, oh gosh, June-ish, the very beginning of June, end of May, beginning of June of 2019, that I got dumped for the last time. <laughs> and after that, I obviously had a week of like rage <laughs> and just being mad. I didn't do anything stupid. I was just annoyed. Um, but very quickly during those three months, I, like after that, I came to a place where I was like, if I'm single forever, it is good. It is good. And I have Jesus. And I am going to make the most of this time. And I finally got to a place and it was the, the freest I've maybe ever felt in my whole life. So free that when I met my husband, Kai, in August of that year, I was almost scared to go into the coffee shop uh, on a date with him because we were meeting for our first date. And I was almost scared too because I was like, I am so happy being single. And how beautiful is that, that I finally was so content and happy in the Lord that he led me to my husband. It's not like I was dragging God along trying to find my husband. Like, he very easily led us together and it was perfect. So I just want you to know that God is not a plan B to your husband. It's not, well, if I'm single, at least I have God. No, you have God first. You have God first. And that is incredible. May we never put God as a plan B and our husband as a plan A, because I promise your husband is not going to fulfill you. Any problems that you bring into marriage, any insecurities, they're still going to be there. And your husband is not going to fill your cup. God is. So you can fully embrace this time so that when God does lead you to your husband, maybe one day, you'll be ready. So I hope these tips helped you. I hope they encouraged you. Send this video to somebody you think might need this encouragement. And I love you guys so much and I will see you soon. Bye guys. Ooh.